Now turning to the Target 12 investigators with a grim financial news for Rhode Island's biggest hospital group. Target 12 investigator Ted Nisi has been tracking the health of local hospitals for years and just broke this story on WPRI.com. Ted, you found some red ink at both of the top hospital groups in Rhode Island. Yeah, Kim, Sarah, it's been a tough year for these hospitals. And let's start with Lifespan, which is the owner of Rhode Island Hospital, as well as the Miriam, Newport, and Bradley. Lifespan says its operations lost $77 million in its last fiscal year, which ended on September 30th. Executives there are blaming the poor performance on a drop in patient volume during last winter's COVID resurgence, as well as ongoing staff shortages in the wake of the pandemic that's been driving up the cost to recruit and retain workers, as well as the cost to hire what so-called traveling nurses who come in on contract. And this news comes just months after Lifespan CEO for the last 10 years, Dr. Tim Babineau, said he was going to step down unexpectedly. His replacement is a Boston hospital executive who's scheduled to take over early next year. And Ted, it wasn't just Lifespan, but also the second biggest hospital group, Care New England. Yeah, Care New England also having trouble this year, and they've been having financial challenges for a number of years, so it's less of a surprise. They even had to close Memorial Hospital, people remember, in Pawtucket a few years ago. Let's take a look at the numbers for them. They show the situation is still challenging at Care New England. They own Kent, Women and Infants, and Butler Hospitals. Their operations lost $34 million during the 12 months that ended September 30th. Executives at CNE also blame the same factors as lifespan, like the pandemic and staff shortages and they've also been taking a number of steps to try and shore up their finances at Care New England including new plans to build a 30 bed women's surgery unit at women and infants and Ted Care New England has also been getting some support from Brown University which has a medical school uh, th they work with both of the hospital groups yeah Kim but of course because they uh, have their doctors getting trained at these hospitals Brown paid Care New England about seven million dollars over the summer to purchase four properties in the jewelry district from Care New England and Brown also recently announced it will contribute $5 million toward the cost of building a new labor and delivery unit of women and infants. I asked Brown President Christina Paxson about that on last week's edition of Newsmakers. I will be honest, it is unusual. You know, in most places, funds flow from the hospitals to the university, not the other way around. That's fine. Uh, and, you know, we know that Care New England has to behave really aggressively and strategically to regain financial health to survive as a standalone healthcare organization. And it's important to Brown that that happens. Just another sign of the more active role that Brown is now taking to shape the Rhode Island healthcare landscape these days. And if anyone missed Newsmakers, they can listen to the podcast. Or Please do. Watch Sign it up. online, yep. <laughs> WPRI.com. Target 12 investigator Ted Nisi, thanks for being here. Good to be here.